Chapter 5 shows something that was absolutely revolutionary in 2007 and 2008 when the picture postcard workflow in its infancy was introduced to a hushed and expectant world. Um, it is a way of boosting colors beyond all recognition with the idea of bringing them back to um, something more realistic. Now, it was very good for its time and it still is good in its way. Um, nowadays, we tend to use a more complex action, which you'll see it's, it's a combination of, of chapters 5 and 6. It uses the color boost that you're about to see here, plus the modern man from Mars method of chapter 6, about which we have some other videos. But this particular one, I'm only going to stick with the color boost action itself, just in the interest of simplicity. Why do we need a color boost? because the steps that you've seen in Chapter 3 and Chapter 4 tend to, to produce a rather tepid uh, picture. I mean, not a, not a bad picture, a pretty snappy one, colors acceptable, but not exciting, not particularly interesting. So we ha need to find a way to boost the colors. We do this with a very simple action. It moves the picture into LAB, which is the best way of getting brighter colors. It beats doing it in saturation in any way in RGB or any way with curves. Um, and it also adds a layer which we may or may not use to adjust the contrast of the picture for setting highlights, shadows, that kind of thing, or just because we think the picture is too light or too dark. But the basic idea is um, to boost the color. And it's such a simple action that I can show you how it works by hand. And I'll do that with the picture that I have in mind here. Okay, we have here a picture of Venice, which is uh, an old city and therefore it doesn't have a whole lot of bright colors in it, but nevertheless we would like to see perhaps a bit more color than this. So if the action didn't exist, we could duplicate it in the following way. Okay, move, the, move the file into LAB, bring up the layers palette, add a curves adjustment layer, go into the A channel and make it extremely steep, but pass it through the center point, which makes it not attack uh, neutral colors. The neutral colors won't change if we do that. And do the same to the B, except not quite at steep of an angle. That steep of an angle. Like that. Okay, so now we have a color boost layer. That's really boosting color. And then I would add a second adjustment layer, and this one I wouldn't do anything with. I'm just going to say it's um, endpoint adjustments. And this is there just in case. Just in case I want to do something to change the lightness of the picture in some way. Like here, I think I would probably want to have a lighter highlight. But for the time being, this is what the action does. Here's where the damage is being done on the color boost layer. And now we would figure out a way to, um, to get that down gracefully. And the way we do that is we don't just look at the picture and say, ugh, well, it's really way too colorful now. This is disgusting. Why don't we throw it in the trash? We ask, are there certain areas of this picture that are more ugly than others? And the answer is yes, in my opinion. Uh, for example, the water here of the canal, I don't think it's that bad. This bright red here in the buildings is, is quite bad. The yellow over here, I can live with that. I can live with the sky. This here is a little bit too yellow, but my, my biggest objection here is that these buildings, which seem to be made of some kind of brick, they're way, way red. So they're worse than the rest of the picture. And I would like to find a way to cut back on the color of this that would discriminate against the reds more than the other colors in the picture. Um, the way I'd probably do it is I'd say, not only, I, 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 I don't even have to say reds. I can say the darker parts of this picture are worse than the lighter parts. Okay, and I'm not going to do it with this particular version because I can already see that there's a little inaccuracy in the curves that I did. You may have noticed that my AB curves were extremely steep. It's very difficult to hold neutrality when you do that. Um, the action that we have, in principle, it does exactly the same thing, but it's been carefully tested so that it doesn't change neutrals. So here, in this area, this is rather yellow. Um, I bet if I had run the action, this wouldn't happen. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to throw these away. And I'm going to do a first try here. And here I'm going to run the action. 
There it is. And I think if you can recall what that first one looked like, it did look a little bit more yellow than this does. So here we are. Two, the two new layers have been established. The color boost layer adds the color. The endpoint adjustment layer for the time being doesn't do anything. Um, so these, the layers are, are interactive. Each one affects the other in a certain way. So you could start with the endpoint adjustment or you could start with the color boost. I think I would like to start with the color boost um, given my philosophy that the reds or really the dark parts of the, of the image are more offensively colored than the rest. So I go in here to the layer mask on color boost. Um, the obvious way to reduce the color would be to reduce the opacity of the layer. But I don't think that's that smart here because that would reduce all colors uniformly. I think it would be better to reduce it with a layer mask. And here I'm adding a copy of the L channel, the, the lightness or luminosity channel. It says channel LAB, but that's what it means. It means the lightness channel. Doing that is exactly equivalent. Okay, so there's after the mask was applied and there's before. And you see how it really suppressed the redness that I was objecting to. Now, should we do more with it? I don't know, because first I'm going to, uh, I'm going to change the endpoint adjustment layer because it seems to me that this picture looks a little bit too dark. Okay, um, so I go to the endpoint adjustment layers and I adjust the curves. I don't like this orientation, so I'm going to change it to that. Okay, I'm doing this sort of to set a highlight, and it still maybe looks a little bit too dark to me. That's more like what I would have in mind for the darkness of the picture. There's without that last move and there's with. And now that I've lightened it, it strikes me as being a little bit too colorful yet. So I'd go here and now I would reduce the, um, the opacity of this layer. So now that's taking colors away altogether. Okay, so that would be finished. And the question is, is it better than the original? Let's go back to the original and see. Oh, I would have to say so. Now, I'm going to make a second copy of this original to show an option that's available in this action and also available in the more complicated um, uh, color boost action, or color boost plus man from Mars action that we'll be seeing later. So here's going to be the second try. Now, you may have noticed that when I did the curves in the, uh, in, when I did the action by hand, I made the A curve steeper than the B. And in doing that, I emphasized changes in magenta versus green as opposed to changes in yellow versus blue. It's not logical to do that, and in my book on LAB, I didn't recommend doing that. Experience has shown, however, that in the majority of images, it's better to do that. It's better to emphasize the A slightly over the B. Now, that nasty phrase, the majority of images, suggests that there's some in which it's not right. That you might want to do it the other way. You might want to emphasize them equally or even emphasize the B more than the A. Um, effective with this version of the um, PPP panel, uh, PPW panel, you can do that. I'm going to option click now in the action here. And up comes this um, options menu. This side says for this image only. This side size says uh, we're going to change the default and going to do every image this way from now on. But just for the sport of it, I'm going to do this image only. And instead of doing the default, A will be bigger than B. I'm going to do the B will be bigger than A. And click OK. And this is what I get. Uh, you may recall that that, uh, in comparison to the other image, this one's probably a bit more orange now. OK, but the same thing applies. I'd want to apply a layer mask to cut down the reds, and I would want to lighten the image somewhat. Now, the cheating way to do this would be to just steal the curve that lightens the, the picture from the other image. I could just drag it over to this layer's palette and be done with it. Not a good philosophy. A uh, better philosophy is just to do it again over here, because by having to do it a second time, I'm going to be doing it slightly differently. Maybe it will be better, maybe it will be worse but I'll have both to compare. So I go to this layer and now I make a new layer from scratch. Maybe I'll do it this way this time. Okay, and is this too colorful? Maybe not. 
I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll live with this. Okay, so now this is going to be my second version. And I still do have the first version, so I made a copy. And here's the first version on top. Second version, first version. This is the version that emphasizes the L's, this is the version that doesn't. Uh, I was hoping there might be a little bit more difference in the contrast, but there isn't. The only difference I see is in the color. Um, so, I like this version here where we have this sort of a, a cleaner white. As against that, I like this version over here where it has a little bit more of a yellow. So you can blend these two how, however you like. I mean, I'd, I might be inclined to just do a 50-50. And I could do that like so. And this, this one might be better than either parent. But I can tell you one thing, that if we go back with this one into RGB, if we compare that to the original, it's made a considerable difference. So this is what the color boost layer can do for you. Um, it's important to understand how it works, but again, I don't recommend, well, I recommend that you learn with this. Uh, start with just the color boost action, see how it works, see how it changes things, and then go on to the more advanced color boost plus MM action, which will give you a whole lot more control of your colors as you make them brighter, as you enhance them.